Good morning everyone and welcome to Fishy Business. My name is Reagan and I'm the saltwater manager here at the store. And today for just the next couple of minutes, I actually get to be the one that talks to you about just a handful of some of the saltwater fish that came in this week. So with that being said, let's get started. All right guys, so this shark is very near and dear to my heart. He is a brown banded bamboo shark. Now these guys are very popular in home aquariums due to a couple of different reasons. These guys don't get very large for sharks. They're gonna stay around two to two and a half feet long. These guys are also more peaceful and docile and can live in more of a communal type tank. They're still sharks, so they're still gonna be a little aggressive, but these guys, like I said, are gonna be more peaceful, more communal, a little bit more docile. A lot of divers in aquariums, when they go to feed these guys, they can actually pick them up and run their hand along their entire bodies. They're also gonna be able to be hand fed. Just be careful, I would imagine using tongs would probably be the safer option, but these guys are great. Um, they need at least a 180 gallon tank, but if you're looking for a showstopper who doesn't get very large and can be kept with most fish, your brown banded bamboo shark is the perfect one. All right, so this right here is a starry blenny. They're very easy to take care of, they're very peaceful, and they are reef compatible. They do get a little bit bigger than the lawnmower blenny, and as they mature and get older, he'll stay dark, and he, you can see the white spots on him right now, but he'll actually get little tiny white spots all over him, and it'll make it look like he's covered in stars, hence the name the Starry Blenny. These guys don't get very big, so these guys would be a great choice for a bio cube. These guys are typically not aggressive, and so, but they are best to be kept singly in an aquarium. All right, so these bright colored fish in here are going to be your clown gobies. I have yellow clown gobies in here right now, as well as some assorted colored clown gobies. These guys are also very easy, very peaceful. They are completely reef compatible. They only get about an inch and a half, so these guys are perfect for any type of small tank. They do add a cheerful addition just because of their bright color. They're also extremely active, and they are carnivores. So these guys are gonna prefer different types of brine shrimp, mysis shrimp, and meaty foods like that. All right, so this guy's is a Valentini saddle puffer. They're actually gonna stay a lot smaller than most puffers, only around four inches. So if you guys are looking for a puffer fish but don't have that large of an aquarium for some of our larger body puffers, the Valentini puffer is gonna be the perfect one for you. This one's almost full grown. He's very large as he came in, so he's not gonna get a lot bigger than what he is right now. Now these guys are a peaceful type of puffer. Now they're, we say they're reef compatible with caution because these guys do have a beak still and so they're probably gonna want to pick at invertebrates, snails, shrimp, hermit crabs, different things like that. Um, these guys have those really beautiful brown bands across and that bright yellow tail. Those freckles on his face are just gonna get more pronounced with age. All right guys, so this is a clown trigger. This guy is probably only the size of about a half dollar right now. Now, as I'm sure you guys know, trigger fish do get very large and the clown trigger is no exception. This guy also will look a little bit different in adult form. He'll lose some of the little white spots on top of his head. The yellow will just get brighter with age and those white spots along the, his belly and underside will get larger as well. Now these guys are of course carnivores. They're gonna need to eat big meaty pieces of meat as well as different types of shrimp such as mysis shrimp. Now triggerfish are aggressive and clown triggers are gonna be a little bit more aggressive. So I would only recommend them going in a predatory or very large fish tank with fish their size. Now these guys are not reef safe only because they are going to eat different invertebrates, again, crabs, snails, and shrimp. They don't have a taste for coral, so you won't have to worry about them eating your coral, but all of your little invertebrates, these guys will gladly pick on. So this is the raccoon butterfly. This is actually my favorite species of butterfly. Now butterflies in general aren't going to be very hardy, so a lot of times we don't carry them in the store. Now the raccoon is going to be a little bit hardier than some of your others, which is why I chose to get one this week. Now butterflies are going to be very peaceful. Uh, they're an omnivore, so they're going to eat algae, different seaweeds occasionally, as well as meats, such as mysis shrimp and brine shrimp. Now these guys are not reef safe. Um, they will munch on some of your corals, so just be careful if you would like to add one into your reef tank. I would recommend keeping butterflies in fish-only aquariums. 
All right, so I finally got golden head sleeper gobies back in here. It's probably been two or three months since I've been able to get them. Now these guys are a sand sifting type of goby. They're actually my favorite. Um, so they are gonna hang out on the bottom, sifting the sand, but unlike the diamond goby, as you can see right now swimming with some of the female antheas, these guys are gonna be more of a free swimmer. So these guys will actually come off the bottom. You'll see them swimming around, emerging with your community of fish. They'll even come out to feed as well, which is one reason why I really like these guys. You can see their bright yellow face and electric blue line right down the side of their face as well. Under a blue light, that really does stick out and they're completely reef safe as well. Highly recommend the Golden Head Super Goby. All right, so I finally got green mandarin gobies back in stock. And I'm not gonna lie to you, these guys are huge. These are some of the biggest mandarin gobies that I have seen. Um, now, mandarin gobies are going to be probably the most beautiful fish in the ocean. Um, a lot of people see them and immediately want to get one. Now, these guys are very hard to take care of as they only eat copepods, which are little tiny, almost microscopic phytoplankton bugs in the water column. Now, if you guys are interested in getting a mandarin goby, please stop by. We'll help you get your tank dosed with copepods so that we can add one of these guys to your aquarium. They're super beautiful, super peaceful, and can pretty much live in any size aquarium. All right, guys, I finally, finally, finally got in some flamingi tanks. Now, this one right here is a juvenile. He's gonna be a little bit darker in color than the adults. Um, flamingi tangs are extremely peaceful. They have wonderful personalities, and some have even been known to watch TV with you in the tank. Um, these guys are herbivores, so they are going to need seaweed about um, three to four times a week, um, but they're also going to enjoy some PE mysis as well. Okay, so this is a teenager flamingi tank. So you guys can kind of get a better idea of how they're going to look as they mature. They're going to get lighter in color. Those blue spots and highlights on them are going to electrify. Now the males as they get older will get a large hump on their head and they will get large streamers off their tails. So my favorite fish that I got this week is the Nauco Fairy Rats. Now this guy is absolutely stunning with that bright red and electric yellow on his sides. He is going to have blue on his tail as well. Now the Nauco Fairy Rats, let's see if I can get him to come out a little bit. There we go, buddy. They are completely reef safe. They are gonna get around four inches, so they do need a somewhat decent size aquarium. You can see those colors on his tail and on his body just really pop. Now, these guys do prefer to be kept by themselves as they will be aggressive only towards other species of grasses. This one right here is a male and you can tell by that really large black dorsal fin on the top of his body. Um, grasses, as I'm sure some of you guys know, do like to jump, so I would recommend keeping a lid on your aquarium, but this guy is absolutely beautiful and I know that he's not going to last long, so come on down and check him out. Alright guys, well I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Like we always say, that was just a handful of some of the fish that we got in. There are many, many more, so we do encourage you guys to come on down and check those out for yourselves. And so once again, my name is Reagan. We hope you guys to continue to have a great rest of your week, and we hope to see you guys down here at Fishy Business. God bless, and have a great week.